Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about things that you can find in the Dollar Tree for homeschooling and a little bit about the curriculum as well. So probably math curriculum. But so you can see that you go to the Dollar Tree, you can find the color and shapes flashcards. They have other flashcards as well. Um, there's number flashcards, um, matching flashcards, there's games. They have books, educational workbooks that are only a dollar. And they have not just one of every subject, but they have quite a few right now of every subject. And this one has letter sounds. And phonics are very important. And they have a lot of them. There's another phonics book. Um, numbers and counting. So, and there, this one helps to teach their shapes. So you can see the road signs have the different shapes to help teach them the shapes. <clears throat> and it also has a dry erase marker. Um, there's some more with the colors and shapes. You can see they have several of every different things. And there are some more colors and shapes. So there's so many different items. And here's a calendar. So you can take this calendar and you can write the days of the week on it. You can write which days are which, which days, dates follow, follow on which days of the week. You can do a different calendar for every month using this with dry erase markers. So that would be fun. And there's dry erase markers and they have the eraser with them. So you get four of them for a dollar. So how inexpensive is that? Here's a book about opposites. Here's some more colors and shapes, activity books, phonics, numbers, alphabet. Um, here's some fun dice to help them teach their numbers. And there's also, you can see money on the left-hand side, play money to help them teach them as well. And here's some color and shapes, first words, uh, big and little. <clears throat> so there's so many different little books that teach them different things. They have activity books. There's one on reading. So it, it goes with the, they have up to first grade and there's the alphabet and you can use that to help teach them. The A is the alligator. A is A for alligator because you want them to learn the sounds of the letters in order to be able to read. Shapes and sizes. Shape words, compare sizes. numbers one to ten and it shows the the number and it also shows the word and then it shows how many there are it says how many horses are there so they'll be able to identify their numbers for math and for adding and then there's first words after you teach them their phonics maybe you could go over with reading the words and putting the sounds together so there's water animals so that they have different big and little I think I showed that one to you already, but you can see letters and writing, educational workbook, time and money. And money is one of the things, if you're learning how to add and you're learning how to subtract and you're learning single digits adding and double digit adding, money is very important for their education to learn how to be able to add up money and time. Um, addition, they have an addition book. They also have subtraction books. So they have a lot of educational material and it's only a dollar. I was very shocked to find out they had so many. They have a weekly planner. They have a monthly planner. So you can see that. There's addition flashcards. Once you teach them how to add, you want them to be able to do it very quickly. So they have flashcards that you can go through slowly and then later on you can go through them again so they know them very quickly. They have dice and the dice have the different dots on them so that will help them to know how many when they roll the dice. They know they rolled a six or they rolled a one so they recognize how many is on the dice and they know what the number is. You would think that board games and playing games wouldn't teach them so many things but it does and there's Uno which also helps to teach them numbers and it's a small little pocket size cards. So they have so much. 
And this one is money. So I wanted to go over some of the curriculum and some of the ideas. When you're teaching children, you want to talk to them. When you check the oil, when you make cocoa, read the directions so that they understand what you're doing over time. Have them help you even in small ways. Teach them how to pick up, wipe up, clean up after themselves. Sharing with them and saying the number of how many of the items. When you go grocery shopping, say I'm going to buy one of these and two of these. Pointing out while shopping that one gallon and four quarts holds the same amount. And two half gallons hold the same amount. But it costs less to buy one gallon. It's a, it's a way of teaching them about what holds more. About halves, about quarters, about quarts, about money. Um, cooking pancakes, if you make them smaller, you can make this many. Next day, if you make them bigger, how many can you make with the same amount? And do you like them larger or smaller? Using arts and crafts, crayons, construction paper, cut out patterns to teach them how many is the same, the colors, the shapes, to build people with eyes or cotton balls or make snowmen from construction paper. You're teaching them so much from doing that that you don't realize it's just not arts and crafts. And then you glue houses with shapes and colors and patterns and you teach from doing this, you can teach them the circle, the square, the diamond, the heart, the triangle, the different shapes. Um, you can plant a garden using the square foot garden method with strings of yarn. And that teaches them how many will go in each square foot and what a square foot is. And then it also teaches them, you could put two at an angle at the square foot sometimes to get them if you need more room to plant more things. But you read the instructions on the seeds and it, it shows how many inches deep to plant them, how far apart, uh, the seasons, the months, the weather. Make a list of what you can plant and when, how long it will take for it to grow and you watch it grow. Um, how many per square foot, what you can plant near each other, uh, the type of nutrition the plants need, how often to water them, the days, the time. Um, you can hang up a big and small yearly calendar and have them make a calendar for the month. Talk about the days of the week and what happens on those days. Maybe you are off that day and you go out to eat certain days or maybe you have certain days that you eat the leftovers in the fridge or certain days that you pack the meals for the week. That way you can learn what days of the week are. Uh, maybe you work on certain days or you have a friend who does or maybe you have one day as payday or days that you do something special. Talk about the time of the day compared to meals, naps, and other activities. Have them write the family's birthdays on a yearly calendar. Talk about AM and PM, the seasons. Reading a clock on the hour first and then the half hour or halfway between is 30 minutes and it's called, you know, 1.30 or 12.30. Note the time that you get up, the time you eat, the time we go to bed. Um, go to bed at the same time every day and give a time for them to brush their teeth and get ready for bed and say it is six o'clock or seven o'clock. Get your clothes out to wear perhaps that evening for the next day before bed and set them out so you don't have to hunt for them in the morning and maybe even decide what will be for breakfast and have that ready as well. Begin introducing clocks and time and teaching morning versus afternoon and evening cooking with measuring if you have them helping you cook or watching you cook and you're talking to them you're teaching them about teaspoons and tablespoons and cups a half a cup a fourth a cup a third a cup gallon quarts pints while cooking it helps teach them about time and the clock as well how long it takes to cook it what time you put it in what time you take it out um, counting to three in fun ways, counting to 10 and 20 in fun ways. Learn how to count things such as pennies, marbles, toothpicks, popsicle sticks, and fingers. And you can do that while you're doing arts and crafts. And this is part of their math curriculum. Um, you can hang up a hundred chart poster on the wall for them to see. You know, and you can ask them which number comes before three, which number comes after three. Learn to sort things together by shapes and colors, similar to the same size, the same color. So you're teaching them that. Um, match things that look alike by coloring them, circling them, or drawing a line to connect them. Count how many pairs of lookalikes there are. 
they want you to learn more like fewer, larger, small, smaller, smallest, less than, the same size, equal to, inside, outside, left, right, in the middle, over, under, above, around, below, next to, same, different, long, short, tall, wide, narrow, heavy, light, bulky, top, middle, bottom, holds more, holds less, pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, counting pennies, shapes, colors, counting sides of shapes, bigger, big, biggest. This is part of their curriculum for a preschool. Flat and solid shapes. You want to learn what spheres and cubes and introduce them to cones and cylinders. Blocks, building blocks, adding and subtracting, using words like take away and minus, count to 30, count to 100. And this is in order of their curriculum. So for the most part, um, learn how to write your numbers, trace numbers, trace the word for the number. Have a photo next to the number showing the number of items. And you can find that in the Dollar Tree items. Um, read spelled out numbers and write the number beside the words. This is going to be part of their curriculum and what they need to know. Um, you want to teach them that plus sign means add, minus sign means subtract or take away. Equal sign means it's equal to or the same as. It's not more than or less than, but the same. Showing, adding, because even when they do algebra, they're going to need to know that what's on the equal sign to the left and to the right will be equal to and the same as. So you're helping them even prepare for algebra as you're doing this. Showing adding with numbers on paper. Put the blanks. Make sure if the you don't want to have the blank always at the end. Make sure you put the blanks at the beginning, the middle, and the end while you're teaching them simple addition and simple subtraction and use pennies while you're doing this so that they can learn this easier and it will be easier for them to understand and easier for them to do. Uh, teach about cutting food like sandwiches and halves or fourths or at an angle to form a triangle instead of squares. When you fold wash rags into fourths or folding towels, some people fold them into thirds. Um, adding single digit numbers. Um, like I said, put the blanks at the beginning, the middle, the end, different places. Use pennies. Use any, if you have popsicle sticks, use popsicle sticks. Use whatever you have. You can use play money from the Dollar Tree. Or you can use real money. And you know, you can start teaching them after that that there are five pennies in a nickel, 10 pennies in a dime, 25 pennies in a quarter, 100 pennies in a dollar two nickels in a dime, and you want to ease them into this. Five nickels in a quarter, 20 nickels in a dollar, 10 dimes in a dollar, four quarters in a dollar. Make a poster and have the child take a pencil and scratch the pencil on paper over coins to add art into math. You know how you scratch the little pencil on a piece of paper over quarters? We used to do that. And then you can see the quarters show up in the nickels and the pennies when you do that. But And then you teach them how to count by tens to a hundred. That's one of the next things. Um, writing numbers. Write tens and ones. Heading up to 10 using pennies, right? Two tens and three ones is 23. Four tens and two ones is 42. If you have an abacus and math blocks, then let them use them. Draw a line from the number to the word for the number so that make sure they understand that the word for that number, what it is. And you can create papers and pages after you do that to have them draw a line and choose which number goes to which word for that number. We work on clocks and time. You want to teach them on the hour first, then the half an hour, then a quarter of an hour. Then you do by five minutes. And then you count by fives around the clock. Five minutes after, five minutes before, ten minutes after, ten minutes before. And then you can teach them about the every little line has one minute. Um, some of the other subjects you're teaching them, phonics, reading, the five senses. You can play I Spy with colors. Play in a large box like it's a house. Play Mother May I, Simon Says. Play with sock puppets that you make. Play hide and seek. You do puzzles. Teach them how to skip, hop, jump, play, go fish, collect rocks. You can sort the rocks by different colors. Teach them how to take turns. Teach them about sharing, putting toys away together, making popsicles out of Kool-Aid, making paint 
mixing the paint colors. When they finger paint or diff do different paints, you can teach them how to, you mix these two colors and it makes the other color. You teach them how to write their name, their address, and their phone number, and then all of that, and you're done with preschool, and you're on to kindergarten. So you can find pretty much all of that at the Dollar Tree. And then when you're teaching them kindergarten, you're teaching them maybe you want to set an alarm for them to wake up to. Maybe you can have pints of milk in the fridge within their reach for them to prepare their own bowl of cereal for breakfast and keep some bowls and spoon of cereal where they can reach it and let them do that themselves and allow them to do what they can for themselves so that they have this I can do it attitude. And if they miss a day, don't worry about it. You know, if they have trouble one day, they want you to do it for them. That's fine. But you just let them know it's fine and understand they're learning and you're just teaching them so that they can do things for themselves so they understand they can pitch in and it will help boost their self-esteem and in kindergarten you got to continue to talk about the seasons the months the weather the holidays days of the week making a monthly calendar with them to hang on the wall go through a yearly calendar that has photos to show the seasons and the weather and the holidays create an everyday poster with the days of the week and the months of the year on the poster right what is today's date? What is the day of the week? What time is it? Have the students trace and write the days of the week on paper. You that and you teach them how to count and add with money. And we're going to go over that again for first grade. Which pictures of money show more than? Which pictures of money show less than? Which pictures show the same amount? Adding one to numbers like one through five, then adding number, then adding two, then adding three, then adding four, then adding five, and make sure you put the blanks in different places because that is so important with teaching them math. Subtract and take away one, taking one away um, from numbers up through five, then minus two, then minus three, then minus four, then minus five. Number lines counting forwards and backwards. What plus 5 is 15 on the number line? 10 plus what is 15? 10 plus 5 is what? Blank 10s, blank 1s equals 15. Because they have to learn before, after, between. Which number is before? Which number is after? Which number is in between? Then you teach them how to count by twos. Then you teach them equal sides, parallel, flat shapes, one dimension, two dimensional shapes, three dimensional shapes, things that look the same but are different colors like animals compared to animals and cars, trucks that look different. You want to go over what is similar and what's different, what's the same. Um, adding 10 plus 5, 10 plus 3, using pennies with the blanks, like I said, in different places because that's so important. Introduce them to pictures of things in groups of two or three or four or five, up to ten. Create patterns with toys and photos and learn to follow patterns. Introduce to follow a path of images with numbers inside and coloring every other one, every third one, and that's for skip counting, to introduce them to their multiplication tables. Create a hundred chart on paper. And you want a hundred chart on the wall. So maybe they can look at the hundred chart on the wall to help them to create the chart on paper when they need to. And then you want to review that and you want to go over counting with money like pennies and show how many pennies are in a nickel and a dime and how many nickels are in a dime and a quarter and review on the clocks and the time on the hour, half an hour, quarter of an hour, five minutes, counting by fives around the clock and then by 10 minutes and now you're already to the first grade and one of the things that I, I'm not going to go over the whole first grade right now but I want you to think about you have a homeschool student you create a homeschool supply store with money to teach them how to add up change and dollars and about change and counting change back to them you know when you count change back it's like this costs a dollar 25 or dollar 27 so then you go 28 29 if they give you two dollars you go 28 29 30 then you go 40 50 and then you go 75 and two dollars so that's how you count change back some people don't know how to count the change back and to go from there and to count up and then when they get changed for a 20 they'll know how to count it back in their head without having to look and see what the numbers are on a calculator 
Um, some of the things like 25 cents for a pencil, 10 cents for an eraser, 5 cents for a piece of paper, or in such a way that it also helps with their multiplication and they know how to count back change easier if it's by the fives and the tens and the quarters and they understand how a quarter will buy a pencil or will buy two erasers and a piece of paper, things like that. And you put it in a, you can put it in a student's school supply store that, you know, we had those at schools. We used to have student school supply stores when we were younger. I don't know if they still have them. But you can put all these different things in there, notebook, notebook paper, crayons, plain and cute erasers, glue, sharpeners, chalk, small chalkboard, chalkboard eraser, pencil grips, highlighters, protractors, rulers, markers, paint, construction papers, Ziploc bags, art supplies, apron paper plates, wet wipes, tissues, hand sanitizers, a lunchbox, backpacks, different things. And you can, you can use real money or you can use play money that you get from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to show you some more things that you can get from the Dollar Tree to put in your students school supply store you can have a bake sale and teach them how to have a bake sale with popcorn and candy and paper using paper bags we used to do that at school we get to school and they would have bags of popcorn for sale or candies they would have a school fundraiser bake sale at the school where they would get the students to buy different things you can make Christmas bags and gift bags for, for friends or for the homeless with things you get from the Dollar Tree to help to teach them as well. Play in Monopoly, Dominoes, Rummy, Yahtzee, Backgammon, Cribbage, Board Games. And I think I saw Cribbage at Walmart, but they have... I'm trying to stick to the Dollar Tree, so we'll try to... But there's board games with rolling dice and moving like, you know, Sorry for Cheesy, A Trouble... But art projects with hands-on, it teaches them hands-on math. And you can use play money, and they have play money. Or you can use real money that you have. So you can see the pencils. They're $12 for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. They have some cute pencils. Maybe you want some plain pencils. Maybe you want some cute pencils. So that you can put them in your school supply store. And you can... You can play school supply store during the day. You can play restaurant and different things. And there's their eraser. So you can decide how much you want the different items to cost. But this will help them a lot with understanding their math. And there's filler paper. There's rulers they have at the, at the Dollar Tree. They have paper clips. And I think this is a great way to teach them how to do math because it covers so much more of their math than you realize. It covers the colors, the shapes, and it's so much fun. Then they have the items they can use. And maybe if they can't find them and they need a new pencil or they need new paper or they need a notebook and there's poster boards, you can put the poster boards that you want to make posters in the school supply store. So there's so many different fun ways. and. This will help them with, like I said, a lot of their math. This helps them with their math for their preschool, kindergarten, first grade. And then it goes up from there because you're teaching them fractions. They have calculators at the Dollar Tree. But I, I just don't know if people realize that just there's so many ways to teach hands-on math other than just a pencil and paper other than just videos although I do love schoolhouse rock videos and they are free on YouTube and I think that's an excellent choice but look at the globes even to help teach them they have globes at the Dollar Tree they're small but there's a protractor they have so many different things and you know they always change out what they have sometimes they have different things that you might get you might stock up on this 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 month and then next month they might have completely different things and this right here the wooden arts and crafts and you, you might want to introduce them to how to do this when they're younger and then when they get older and this helps teach the shapes there's a shape of the heart there's a shape of the circle so you can use these to help teach shapes as well and then they can paint them and they can use them in their school and you can put them in the school supply store and maybe when they get older and you want to teach electives like woodcrafts or things like that 
they've been introduced to it so they can see how somebody probably put those together and it will help teach them but did you see the circle on the wheels so if you have cars you can teach them the circles on the wheels and how many wheels this how many cars have so if you have three cars how many wheels do they have this will introduce them to multiplication and this goes way up into their math skills for their older grades because some people you know they start to get into older grades and they start doing fractions and trying to find the common denominators and multiplying fractions and adding fractions and they have difficulties but doing things like this might help keep them from having problems like that and look at the paint there's paint for arts and crafts and i think arts and crafts are one of the best ways to teach math and cooking as well I, I, somebody mentioned electives to me the other day and do students really need electives and to me you learn so much more from electives than you realize music music helps you teach math if you're trying to understand a half note and a quarter note that's helping to learn about math and here's some more stuff from the dollar tree for arts and crafts i just it's amazing how much they have if you haven't been there to buy things canvas can be so expensive to paint on and there it is there's yarn even if you want to make yarn dolls wrap, you know you used to wrap the yarn around the books to make yarn dolls you can paint pictures for people for gifts for Christmas as well, too. And there's paint. But this is just some of the fun things at the Dollar Tree. And you can go all the way at least up to the first grade, if not a lot further. And here's some more arts and crafts. So that's just some fun things that they have at the Dollar Tree. So hopefully that helps somebody. There's some glue. But look at the different. You can sort them by colors and shapes. You can make jewelry. It's just so much. And I'm hoping this video helps somebody out there who's struggling. You know, what can I get from the Dollar Tree? And how is this going to help me teach my students? But this, you can use these to teach math. You don't realize that if you're, if you're helping with cooking, you're learning so much about fractions and, and how to add fractions so that when you get older and you start doing that, it's so much simpler because you already understand it. You already have the basic understanding for what you need to know it for and how you use it. So, and this is if you, I added this on right here, this next one, because if you're trying to come up with little gifts for donations for family or friends you can separate these or or you can add them to other things you can make little gift bags and put things like this in it maybe with a hairbrush toothbrush toothpaste and they have these little plastic gift bags that you can take rubber bands and rubber band them together or you can use a blow dryer and heat them together so that you can create your own gift bags and they have cups where you can put um, hot cocoa and different things in them for Christmas presents. Or if you want to donate presents. Even if you want to go, we might go into places like McDonald's if it's open on Christmas. Sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. So if it's not, we might go the day before. And we might go, to, if we see people that look like they're lonely and they're sitting in places like McDonald's and Burger King and it's Christmas Eve, we might go in there and just give out gifts to random strangers and say, hey, Merry Christmas. We just wanted to, you know. So we do that sometimes because that's it's fun for us. Um, we might go and create gift bags and take them to some place like McDonald's or Burger King and give them to the manager to hand out to the workers and find out how many workers there are just to show that we appreciate the workers. You know, they may not make so much money and they can re-gift them if they want to and maybe they can't afford gifts for somebody. Maybe they have a teenager at home that they can't afford gifts because they're trying to pay the bills and they're trying to pay the babysitter. You just never realize things like that. You never realize how much it helps people. But I just wanted to go over some of the things that you could find at the Dollar Tree and some of the curriculum that there was that you may not realize that this helps teachers, students. 
the curriculum and it, it, it might go a lot further than what you realize as you're teaching them. So that's just some of the things that you have at the Dollar Tree for homeschooling your students. And it will help you in a lot of ways that you probably don't even realize. Hey, we're going to make bead jewelry and we're gonna put this many and we're gonna make some bracelets and we're gonna put this many beads on the bracelet and we're gonna do patterns of colors to make the bracelets look better. So then you're teaching them patterns of colors. To me, there's so many arts and crafts and cooking and things like that. Teach people math and gardening more than the books do. I mean, I think I, I think it, you can pretty much cover everything that's in these books that you're teaching them with things that you don't realize. And you don't realize that you can do this. Maybe you haven't even considered it. But... If you go over the curriculum from preschool all the way up to eighth grade and understand what they need to know, there's so many ways that you can teach it. And then, of course, you're going to use paper to teach them so they can be able to write it down and add it up. But there's so many different ways that you can teach math skills that they need so that it's easier for them to learn and they learn so much faster. And you think, oh, there's a lot of math from preschool up to eighth grade that they learn, but there's not as much math as you think there is. They can learn it a lot, really fast. And, well, it depends on their age. You, you know, you want to do it age appropriate. But if, it's, if it was a, somebody that was seven, eight years old, they'll learn up to so far. But some of them can learn all the way up pretty quick. It depends on their age and if when they're ready to learn it. But... It's just not as much math as you think it is. It's just, maybe it was the way it was introduced. And maybe, to me, this is the way to introduce it. This hopefully will help you. I think I'm running out of words and I'm starting to ramble. So I hope this YouTube video helped you. I'm a small channel. I appreciate my viewers. Please feel free to leave comments, suggestions, ideas for people. Um... So thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>